Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Gotham Sound TV. Uh, I am very, very excited to be here with Carl Winkler. Hi, Carl. Carl of Electrosonics. How are you doing? Hello, how are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, you are here to show us a brand new product uh, released on April 2nd, so we know it's real. Yes. <laughs> Electrosonics DSSM transmitter. Funny story about the uh, April 1st, 2nd thing. You know, the SSM was introduced on April 1st, I think 2016 or 2017. I can't remember the year, but... And we played around with the idea that maybe people weren't sure it was real because it was very small. It was among the smallest. Mm -hmm. And so we had a lot of fun with that, people debating all day online whether or not it was real. And we thought, you know, we could do that again, but it's already been done. So uh, the DSSM is the logical descendant of the SSM. Uh, and we gathered a lot of intel from customers asking for specific things to be changed or improved. Mainly, of course, it's a digital transmitter. So it's going to have the D2 mode and then the HDM mode for the really narrow carriers and uh, tight spacing without intermods. So it's going to be compatible with the digital range of receivers like the DSR4, DSQD, DC, uh, DCR, uh, DCHR, and DCR822. It's a lot of Ds, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and then, you know, what's changed really is that it's just ever so slightly larger. I'll show you that here. Uh -huh. Here's an SSM and here's a DSSM. The height is almost the same. It's the new one's a little wider and it's slightly thicker. And the reason for that is twofold to uh, make the corners nice and round and to make it watertight, which is probably the biggest news about it. Uh, it's a, it's a fully, well, you know, water tightness doesn't exist, but water resistant to a specific uh, measurement mm -hmm. be there. Mm -hmm. So it's IP57 rated, which means that uh, it can be submerged or immersed between 15 centimeters and a meter for at least 30 minutes, and it meets that. So we have a certification from, from them on that, from the labs. So that's, that's a really exciting thing. You know, people just find that when you've got a really small transmitter, uh, it's great to be able to hide on the talent. The downside is it gets hidden on the talent in any kind of crevice or armpit, you know. Correct. Uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, it needs to be moisture resistant, and uh, that's why we went the distance on this design. So in some ways, it's not just a successor to the SSM. It's also, in a way, a successor to the WM. Is that fair to say? It is. It's sort of like the... Uh, the, the child of both. You know, the WM has been around a long time, and the MM400 before that, MM200, MM400, you know, watertight units that were completely sealed. Uh, and the idea being, you know, you don't necessarily expect to immerse it or submerge it, but, you know, you use it where there's going to be sweat. It's Those units are used in reality television a lot because of the unpredictable nature of those productions. Um, so, yeah, the idea was this would be a much smaller, lighter uh, version of the WM, uh, but in the digital uh, domain. Okay, so we are getting some questions and comments, and by sure. all means, keep them coming. This is part of why we do this live. So Bill McMillan is saying, uh, asking if we can see the comparison again. So if you don't mind just holding them up. Sure thing, yeah. So I'll hold them a little closer to the camera. So, you know, they're pretty similar. SSM, again, is a little smaller, but it's got the, the hard corners, if you will. And this one's just a little wider, almost exactly the same height, maybe a millimeter taller. Mm -hmm. And then the thickness is maybe a couple millimeters thicker, again, to get those rounded edges. So, see, connectors are the same. Any mic wired for the SSM would go on the DSSM. And this issue here, the detachable antenna. Mm. And part of the reason for that is that we wanted to um, add the ability to use accessory antennas, you know. Going without a connector definitely makes this light and small. This is still the lightest, smallest one, and we're not planning to dis discontinue the, the SSM. So if that's really what you need is the lightest, smallest, this, this one is that. This one, however, you can put an accessory antenna on, and you know, the coax antenna is a perfect choice, particularly if you think this thing's going to get underwater. You know, if so, the whip antenna, you know, all the RF is going to get absorbed. But a coax antenna that you run up the body and have exposed to the air uh, would, would you know, make it possible to get it from a good distance, even though it is submerged. 
And that's the whole idea of the water tube, which we'll talk about later. Perfect. Let's talk batteries and battery life. Same mm -hmm. battery, different battery? Same battery as the SSM and the IFBR1B. This is our LB50 uh, that's private uh, branded for us. And uh, the battery life, uh, we had some measurements yesterday, finally. And uh, at the 35 milliwatt top RF power, by the way, we should say it's got 35 milliwatts, 10 milliwatts, and then if you put it in an HDM setting, the mm -hmm. high density mode, it's two milliwatts. Mm -hmm. So those are your three RF powers. Battery life would be four hours, 30 minutes at 35 milliwatts, six hours, 15 minutes at 10, and eight hours, 30 minutes at the two milliwatt HDM setting. Excellent. Two milliwatts scares people. Uh, <laughs> but I, and it, it scared shouldn't. me. It scared me. Yeah. Uh, until I, I've used it twice now on set. Mm -hmm. You know, um, on a set in particular, it's got to be the right circumstance. These were both on a sound stage, and we were pretty close. Um, yeah. but, but, man, that battery life is sweet um, at yeah. 2 milliwatts. And I, and I was amazed. You know, the talent was like 100 feet from the antenna. Um, and, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was fine. No, uh, maybe 75 feet. But it was it was absolutely fine. It was... Yeah, um, so that's that's great. I want to just talk about the chargers. Well, first of all, you know, please get the battery from us. Those those run times that I quoted are going to be with our battery, freshly charged, and one that's you know not five years old. Okay, uh, there are lots of knockoffs out there of the Fujifilm NP50 type battery, and you'll find the performance to be a half to two thirds ish of what ours will do. So just be aware of that. Mm -hmm. In terms of chargers, uh, this little double gang unit here that's uh, connected by USB, that's available for us uh, from us, and it's in our price list. And we also offer the unit in a kit with the charger. So the unit normally would come with antennas, battery, and belt clip. We haven't even talked about the belt clip yet. It's reversible, yeah. So there's a couple ways to go. You can get the, this one uh, in a kit with the unit and a battery. Uh, or not, and a lot of people we feel like, uh, particularly theaters or any sort of TV production set, news, anybody who's constantly grabbing units and setting them back down, this is just a drop-in charger. So you can see the contacts on the bottom of the unit. It drops right in, and this is the same charger essentially as the one that we have for the IFB uh, R1B with mm -hmm. a different pocket for the, to fit the transmitter. And the batteries also fit in this charger. So you could do a battery or a unit in each slot. So sort of the idea is you can uh, pull your unit out, it's fully charged, pop a battery in, then the battery is charged when you need to swap them. Sweet. And so I think that goes with uh, Tom Carmen 88s question. Can you charge a battery and a transmitter at the s in the same slot at the same time? I think, I no. think, ah, yeah, okay, all right. No, and that's on purpose because you know, that takes a lot of current to, to charge batteries. So if you let them put four uh, transmitters and four batteries into a single tray, uh, that tray is going to draw an awful lot of current. So, and I should mention that we do allow you to gang these together, just like the, uh, the IFBR1B. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I have an image there. Let me share that real quickly. So the idea is that with a single power supply, uh, you can gang up to four of these units, of, of these charging units, to have 16 batteries and or units, any mix. Wow. Uh, but okay. you can kind of see from this view, that when the battery is plugged into the slot, that the transmitter won't fit in the slot anymore. Got it. And by, by design, so that you're not drawing... By design. You're not right. drawing too much current. That's, yeah, it's a very clever system. A question about heat. So at max RF power, how hot does it get? Not very. Uh, it does feel a little bit warm to the touch. Uh, I don't feel like it gets hot at all. There's other units, older units, like let's say an SMV, you know, example, uh, even a SM wideband that uh, will get warmer than this will. So I think it's more efficient. Uh, it also is using the battery at a higher voltage, not drawing as much current. So yeah, it's, it doesn't get very warm. Excellent. We're being asked about, is there remote control, RF control? Uh, no, this has the dweedle tones that you're familiar with. This would respond to wake up, sleep, change frequency, and so on. Same settings that you would expect, like from a DBSM. I am being asked about IR sync um, and and how yeah. that works. 
Yeah, IR sync. It's very hard to see because it's black on black, but there's an IR window on the top panel, mm -hmm. and you would just have to face that towards your uh, source, and then you'll see the IR sync OK in the window there, or if there's a problem with the, the IR transfer. So yeah, it works with uh, all of the current receivers like DSR4, DSQD, and so on with IR sync, and it's two-way. It's a handshake telling both parties what's just happened. And it, and same as previous transmitters. Same, nothing nothing different about that. No, exactly. Like a DBSM or a um, a DBU, any one of those uh, current generation digital transmitters would behave the same as this one. Obviously, uh, it's digital. It's compatible with the digital receivers. Is it compat yes. Does it have compatibility with hybrid? No, it's going to be digital only like any one of our digital transmitters. Okay. And, you know, that question comes up, but keep in mind that, you know, a, a digital transmitter is going to only be a digital transmitter uh, and not compatible with hybrid receivers. But receivers, on the other hand, can be compatible, and most of ours are. Mm -hmm. so DSR-4, DSR, uh, DCR-822, and so on do have hybrid modes, so that they can do both, but the transmitters can really not do that. It's got a three-pin uh, connector that is a yep. standard connector. I'm yep. going through great pains to not say a known name brand of that connector, but it is compatible <laughs> with, all, sure. with that. Um, yeah. And so that's great, but then how, how does it become waterproof when, you, when it, it goes in water? Do you have to do something special on the microphone side? How does that work? Yeah, well, w one of the challenges to m bring this design to life is that we had to find connectors that were watertight, and that took a lot of doing. And we found both an SMA and the miniature three-pin mic connector mm -hmm. that whether there's a something connected to it or not are watertight okay mm -hmm. then the next challenge was how do you interface those to the case mm -hmm. and maintain the water resistance there so that's that those were the big challenges to solve uh, and then of course related to that is the battery opening you know it's not that challenging to make a watertight unit that you cannot open right okay but this one you can pop it open and swap the battery out so that combination, I believe, is unique. IP57 plus take a battery out and, and pop it back in and maintain that seal. So, yeah, lots of challenges on the mechanical side. But uh, we've got some talented designers here. Indeed. I'm not familiar completely with the IP ratings. Um, mm -hmm. in ingress pr protection, is that what the IP stands for? Yes, ingress protection. And what do and the different numbers mean? The first digit's going to be your dust, mm -hmm. and so I forget the, the, you know, how many nanometers or whatever the dust particle is, but uh, the, the five digit tells you that it keeps dust out down to a certain size, and I forget what that is, but we're talking microscopic dust here. Uh, and I don't expect dust to be the bigger issue, um, but uh, the, the seven rating is the one, the second digit is the moisture, and that tells us the 30 minutes uh, up to a meter. Mm. And frankly, in our tests, it does much better than that. Um, but, you know, that's the minimum that it should meet, and it certainly does. Is that a micro USB? On, do, we, do we see that on the transmitter? Uh, not on the outside. That was one of the ways to make it watertight. So we see right. the, the connectors. That the micro the... USB is inside the unit mm -hmm. under the battery. And when you, when you pop it open, it's inside there and it will power the unit to do the firmware update. So you can update it with Wireless Designer just like you would with any other USB connected device. This is exciting and you know, you uh, like us, well the phrase that I like to use is we eat our own dog food. Um, and so um, I wonder, like you're talking into a LOV, into a DPA LOV, um, yes. that is feeding a DSSM transmitter. Um, hold that yep. up to the, to the webcam there. Um, yes. So this yes, is this is the one. This is in uh, this cup of water that's been immersed the whole time. This is the one I'm talking to you on mm -hmm. uh, for this live stream, and it's going to a DCR822. And this is in the 941 uh, frequency band, by the way. Nice. So that's going to come out simultaneously with the A1B1 and the B1C1 units. But uh, yeah, we've we've had this thing in quite a bit of water for <laughs> the last week. Uh, I left it overnight just to see what would happen. This same unit, mm. and it's fine. So it didn't run all night, obviously, it's, uh, but it ran until the battery died, and then I came in the next morning, and there it was. And 
that must be a great feeling, actually. Yes, it is. It's, it's exciting, definitely. How long has this been in development, Carl? Oh, uh, too long. Share. Yeah, okay, fair, <laughs> fair, yeah. Yeah, too long. Um, lots of interesting obstacles to overcome, uh, particularly the mechanical. Uh, but uh, not only that, I mean, to get the circuits efficient enough and the high performance of the, of the transmitter side of it, high audio performance, everything in, in what's a very small amount of circuit board area. Yeah. It's no small task. Ding Dong says, sweet breaking bad mug. My joke yesterday to you was that they give you that when you move to New Mexico. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'd had this prop in my, uh, my cabinet here for years and years, and then I thought uh, when the idea came up of doing the, the live stream and having the unit in the water, I'm like, I know just the mug to put that <laughs> in. Because it's clear. You can see it. No, it's, it's, um, it makes it very obvious exactly how well built that is. David brings up an interesting question. Is mm -hmm. there a significant drop in RF range when it's submerged? And we touched upon this a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the answer for sure, I thought it was limited to saltish water that really um, uh, absorbed the RF. But in fact, it's, it's, you know, just regular water will as well. Any water. Yeah. If the antenna itself is submerged, you will have virtually no range whatsoever. So notice that the way I have it is the antenna is poking out of the water. Um, and uh, yeah, so your, your range would drop to nearly zero. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but like for, the, for some of the tests and one of the videos, and we'll show this here, but we made a, a video to kind of show the water resistance under uh, one meter of water. So I made this coax antenna. Yeah, it's, it's really, um, really, truly, truly re remarkable engineering. We also have these as a commercial product uh, on a specific block, right? But these turned out to be three feet long, and what I needed was one that was a little more than four feet, so I had to make a custom one. The idea here is you connect it to your SMA port on your transmitter, and the tip of the antenna is going to stick out of the water uh, so that you get transmission range. These have been used for like surfing competitions and anything where you want to get extra range. But frankly, I recommend this type of antenna a lot for camera hops and IFB feeds coming out of a bag because you can get your transmit antenna up and away from the bag and away from your receiver antennas and give yourself much more range. So this whole you know, antenna concept is very valuable. So it's, uh, and that's and, fle yeah. flexible. First of all, we should, we should nerd out and, and yeah. talk about um, yeah. uh, how you can make... You, that's a DIYable thing, but you, it's flexible enough to put uh, on your shoulder strap, for example... Um, if you, exactly. yeah, if, if you wanted to use it as, as a hop, uh, I am getting, I got two questions so far, so I want to make sure to address them. Um, yeah. can that transmitter generate phantom power for wireless boom use? No, this has got a, f uh, just the bias voltage. Mm -hmm. And again, that's to get a reasonable battery life. Copy. Okay. That, I mean, I, I understand out of a small transmitter, mm -hmm. uh, I get it. Um, okay. Uh, and so uh, we are coming to the part where a lot of people are asking about uh, price. You know, I, I usually direct people to their dealer. And the reason for that is there's different pricing all over the world. Mm -hmm. So I say a price from Electrosonics. It's not necessarily the price that they would see in their local market. So I just ask that everyone visit your authorized Electrosonics dealer's website, see what they have it listed for, um, you know, and that, that makes it fair to everyone, I think. This is not shipping yet. That's right. It's in the certification process, which takes six to eight weeks-ish, you know, and uh, until it uh, meets the FCC's requirements, which we take very seriously, um, we're not supposed to take orders for it, but pre-orders are okay. Q3? Q4? Q3 is reasonable. Okay. I, I think that's a good guess. Mm -hmm. uh, could be sooner than that. You know, we hope it is, uh, but... I can't pin it down any narrower than that until we get that process squared away. And sometimes there's surprises. I mean, normally not, but sometimes. All right. So I want to make sure we've, got, we've gone over the, the big points. We've gone over battery life. We've gone over RF output power. Um, we've gone over the audio connector and the kind of um, microphone signals it's it expecting. Um, and modu you know, digital modulation mode, um, and in terms of control, it's dweedle tones and IR. Um, any other major points that, that we should touch upon? Oh, and we've proven um, that it's waterproof. <laughs> yes. 
Um, any, uh, let's any, see. Yeah. Here's one. Uh, you mentioned microphone input. Mm -hmm. And because this is the three pin miniature connector, mm -hmm. kind of like what we did with the, with the SSM, you know, there's, there's a menu in here that lets you pick which kind of microphone it is and the settings for bias power, uh, load impedance, uh, polarity, those kind of things are all uh, variable. And so there's a menu in this one in the input menu mm -hmm. uh, called inconfig and it lets you basically uh, choose what kind of microphone you're going to connect to it for the best optimized, let's say, settings. And it really makes a difference. Uh, you know, like for instance, the difference between a Cause 11 and a DPA, you know, they, or a uh, Countryman B6, they, they want to see different bias voltages, they want to see different load impedances. And this has got all that stuff. There's a bunch of presets. Let's continue the example that you are giving us now. You have a DPA yeah. mic on now. Um, yes. Do you remember what exactly what the menu settings are for the mic you have on now? Yes, so that's four volts bias. Mm -hmm. It's reverse polarity, and it is uh, low impedance input. Huh. Is there a way to name to name a preset like that? You know, our, ours are already named in there. So there's a DPA setting, there's a cause that's 11 great. setting, and so yeah. on. But there's also a custom page where you can tweak that. So you know, in the manual, there's a list of all these and what they mean, and then you can say, well, I'd love to have the DPA setting, but with a different, you know, higher impedance, let's say, because I've got, I've got a 4060, and it's highly sensitive, and I want to kind of pad it down just a little bit. So there's your custom. I don't know if that's visible or not. Uh, it is but now. there's your custom yeah. screen. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So you can go in there and tweak to your heart's desire. And I, I found it interesting to start with known settings and then tweak a little and go, yeah, that's better or that's not as good. Yeah. So it's all available. Joe Mullica asks, uh, d uh, does anything have to be done to the LAV 3-pin um, to make it waterproof? So like uh, the DPA LAV you have now, was there any gasketing or any kind of silicone that you had to put on that connector? I did not. Uh, and that is kind of interesting because this is just the microdot adapter Wow. On, uh, for that, and I've just got it in there. It's been submerged here, and I've done some other testing with it. So far, it's fine. I don't know exactly what that means, but I will say that for the NAB show, when we have our uh, one meter water tower in the booth, so mm. people can come and see it live, uh, we've, we're going to be borrowing some DPA uh, HD or heavy duty lab mics that are specifically designed for water uh -huh. because uh, they'll be in, in the thing for four days. So. Uh, I, I'm not sure how they treat their connector when they have a heavy-duty version, but so far I haven't run into any issues with bike connectors, and I've used several different ones, and everything seems to be holding up so, and, so far. And um, with salt water as well, would you take extra precautions uh, with s s corrosion potential of salt water? I would. I mean, if it's going to be in salt water, I would say the key is to rinse it off right afterwards with uh, fresh or even distilled water. Uh, before opening it, then when, it, when you open it, wipe it off really carefully, which is kind of what we say with any, any device that's going to be in the water, uh, to wipe it off carefully, rinse it. Mm -hmm. You know, salt water can be destructive. But we did a salt water test where we took a crock pot, filled it with, with salt water, and uh, put the unit in there and, and heated it up and let it sit, you know, a, a set of housings. Mm. And they hold up remarkably well, so... So far, so good. Amazing. Incredibly impressed with this. And I am excited to get this out there in the world and uh, really, really well done. It's almost like um, the waterproofing is a bonus to the product. Sure. Um, you know, but it's, it's, a, it's fantastic because one thing that, that came up for me is, you know, I don't do a lot of waterproof shots or shots where I need waterproof transmitters, but to be able to have a general purpose transmitter that can do double duty in a pinch, even if it's just like a heavy rain shot or somewhere, something where I know they're going to get wet and not really yeah. have to worry. Um, that's, that's great. People are, um, are uh, they would like 48 volts. Um, I'm just going to say, it. you'll see sure. the comments later, but yeah. 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 Um, you know, I mean, I, I understand. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a different Design product. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Tough decisions to make sometimes when you're hammering down on, on what the thing should do and all the features it should have. And Absolutely. Um, all I can say is, look, we've, we've got a lot of different transmitters, and all of them have evolved over the years and will continue to evolve. So uh, 
it's certainly not never uh, to, to have those kind of features that people are asking for. Thousand percent. Yeah. Keep, I mean, yeah. keep the comments coming. Is there a temperature limit uh, when it comes to being submerged? Our friends at audio department are wondering, and um, the example they give is a hot tub. Well, plus 50 C, which I think <laughs> would be way hotter than anyone could stand. Yes. I mean, yes. I just did some hot springs and I think I, I cooked in the 107 for about as long as I could stand, but that's about, you know, the human limit. So it's mm -hmm. way above that. Yeah. Is there any, uh, any sort of for future use, is there any um, SD or any kind of, uh, not, you know, non-volatile memory in there for audio recording? Not in this unit. That was another tough trade-off. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. All right. Well, Carl, it is really great to, to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time to come on and show us. Um, available now for pre-order. And um, yeah, thank you, Carl. Well, thank you so much for having me and, and talking through the thing. And uh, uh, like you said, we welcome the comments and the questions and, and the wishes for future developments. Um, you know, we're always listening and trying to figure out ways to make the stuff that you guys uh, need and want and, and the, the tools that you can use to do your jobs. And that's what keeps us going. Um, it's been an exciting day uh, announcing this thing. And so really appreciate you hosting me on the show and uh, getting a chance to talk about this thing. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Jared. Uh, thank you, Nate. We'll see you, uh, everybody, soon. We will see you, Carl, at NAB, where we will yeah. be going live again um, from the show floor. Um, you know, hopefully the cell phone gods will cooperate. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we're, uh, live from the floor, as we always do, welcoming your questions and comments. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, we'll, see you. we'll see everybody soon. Thanks.